<clears throat> so, having some steak tonight, and this wasn't one of the weekday wines. This is sort of an inexpensive Bordeaux that I purchased. So, Chateau Fauré de Souchard 2019, Centimillion Grand Cru. Uh, it doesn't say what the varietals are, but it's definitely Merlot heavy. And definitely some Cab Franc, I think, in here. 2019, so it's really, really young. And this thing smelled great. You know, the cedar, the, the leather, the cassis, sort of there's a blackberry, like, blackberry jam thing, a little, not blackberry jam, it's like, like, sour blackberries. And then on the palate, it's, I think it's too young, so it's a little stringent. It's a little, I, I hate to use the word too dry, but it's very drying because it's, the, the tannins aren't quite silky yet. They're a little rough. Finishes a little bit shorter than I want. It's a lot of tannin, not a lot of other things. This definitely have seen has seen some oak, but I don't think it's seen considerable new oak. I think it's just an average Bordeaux. So, where I've had a whole bunch of home runs recently, and yesterday <clears throat> opened up a 2010. Damiani Cabernet Reserve, and it's it's a hundred dollar bottle. It's extremely expensive from a Finger Lakes. A Finger Lakes Cabernet Sauv. It's probably, it's definitely in the top five, if not top two, red wines I've had out of the Finger Lakes. It was phenomenal. It was even better than the one I tasted at the winery, which made me want to purchase a bottle because it was just that good. When I tasted it at the winery, I had no idea what it cost. After tasting, I was like, oh, we got to buy this. And then I get the price, and I was like, wow, but this thing is amazing. It's truly remarkable. It was a 2010. It still got so much youth to it. It had so much complexity, so, so many aromas, and then it... It decanted for about an hour and a half, two hours. It, it was phenomenally good. I could not believe. You would not know with that one you weren't drinking. Sort of between a restrained Napa cab and a sort of an overunctious one. Somewhere in between there. And it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. It, it just it, The string of good wines I had in a row were fantastic. And, and unfortunately... This one's sort of breaking that string. I'm just not that fond of this. Could be that it's too young, but I don't really sense when the finish is so short like that, and it's so stringent like this, and mostly tannin. It's like bitter tannin. And I don't know where this wine's gonna go. Could be a bottle variation. That 2010 I had last night, better than the one at the winery. But the winery one was great. Made me want to buy that one. But the one yesterday was phenomenal. Sometimes you get caught in a situation where you're in an environment. Be it with company. Be it with food. Be it the establishment. Be it the experience. That makes everything taste better. I was just home yesterday. And sometimes there allows you to just think about it a little bit more. And... Sometimes you have that reaction, like, ah, this isn't really as good as I remember. But with everything heightened in a situation, you're on vacation, you're at a winery, you're just everything, it's typically better. But it was, this was the opposite. This was better at home. That bottle was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I, I guess it was just that good. I didn't remember it. Did that tasting at like 11 or 10.30 a.m., and spit everything out. I only had a little bit of that, that 2010. But to sit down with a bottle of it with some decanting was was phenomenal. I, 
I would be hard pressed not to go back there and ask them, do you have another 2010? Actually, I should probably email them and see if they do and have them hold one. So when I go to the Finger Lakes next year, that they have it. It, it was just that exceptional. The best cab saw of in Finger Lakes, bar none. I'm trying, trying to think of a better red. The red at the heart and hands, the Pinot Noir, is ex- is ex- is exceptional. This, this one's even drying out my my mouth where I can't even speak. And some of the reds at Shalestone were phenomenal. Cab Franc specifically did a blend that was phenomenal. And those are far cheaper, but this was phenomenal. We, I, we did also buy a Pinot Noir Reserve 2011 from Damiani, which was also exceptional. It'll be interesting when we try that to see how that one will will end up panning out. Will it be better than it was at the one? We liked this 2010 cab yesterday. That 2010 cab yesterday, I, there was, it had so much more body than I remembered. It was it was on the medium plus the full body spectrum, which you don't typically get out of the Finger Lakes. But there's this banana belt thing where things ripen a little bit. You know, that's the red wine area, that banana belt. If you're in there, you can make better red wine than you can in anywhere else in the Finger Lakes that I have seen to date with two trips there. But I've seen, been to considerable wineries and done my research and gone to the wineries that, you know, I, I thought going up there would be Riesling country, white wine country, but I was wrong. It is it is just a great wine region. Anyway, f- far cry from this to talk about Bordeaux all the way in France, but I think, t- I was just reading an article today, wine, wine enthusiast too, about this climate shift thing. And I think that is why you're seeing these wines in the Finger Lakes, a cooler region, Red wines ripening better, providing just a slightly more fuller body. Not to say fuller bodied is everything, but you do want sort of a ripe grape. You could pick it whenever you want. In Napa, some of the the winemakers that are trying to do it a little different are picking earlier and earlier and earlier to make a red a cab that's just not super overly unctuous, but more restrained, more acidic more for the long haul in a different way than some of the just giant big Napa cabs and maybe not aging in 100% new oak or 100% new French oak, but some lesser new oak and more used oak to just allow the grape to be the grape. There's still body in all those, but the Matthias one I had recently kind of was a little too under in my opinion, ripe up a wine where it didn't even kind of taste like Cab Sauv. So that was a little peculiar, but interesting, just not quite what I wanted. It's like, like New Jersey Cab Sauvs are tough. They just don't really work. The best one I ever had was from Heritage, their BDX, which is a Bordeaux blend, and it's heavy cab. But I don't know if they still make it. But BDX from Heritage Winery in New Jersey is probably the cab sob you'll have. But it's not 100% cab sob. It's got some cab sob, Merlot, cab franc. I don't know what else. Let's say those are the three major ones. Maybe Petit Verdot too. But Petit Verdot needs heat. Petit Verdot absolutely needs heat to, to ripen. Sad thing is I really wanted this wine to be great because the price was really good. And it's just, on the palate, it just falls so short. On the nose, it, it's better. Yeah, on the nose, it's good. On the palate, it just falls short, and that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. So, I'm having an Alsatian, a Cremant sauce. So this is one of my favorites in the $20 range. I'll have the bottle in front of me now. It's kind of a totally goofy bottle, but a phenomenal sparkling Cremant sauce, in my opinion. Recommended at, at Total Wine, and sometimes you just... Recommendations are recommendations, but the gentleman that was speaking to us really recommended this and saw what we were looking to purchase and recommended this, and now this is like a case 
purchase in the 20s when you want a sparkler. This is fantastic. Yes, of course, champagne, $50 a bottle, 60 70 80 100 a bottle are fantastic and amazing. Those aren't your weekday pours. This, for $22-ish, fantastic sparkling for a weekday. Fantastic. So, Cremant is what they make them in the champagne style, but they don't age them nearly as long. But something like Prosecco is made in what they call the tank method, Charmant method, making it a tank method, which is. I can come out more fruit forward. Almost seems like sweet, although not sweet. I think when you go Cremant d'Alsace, Cremant de Bourgogne, Cremant de Loire, you're getting a champagne. They're using the same method, just not aging as long, and they're certainly not using the same quality as they do in champagne. But I believe it's your next... That's the, If you're not going to buy champagnes, Cremant's your best bet. I know Prosecco's okay. I always thought of it as like a mixing thing. There's another level of Prosecco that, of course, I can't pronounce. And I don't really remember it because I really haven't even ventured into it to... Because the Cremants are so good, I don't really believe I need to go to the, the high... There's a high-level Prosecco DOCG. Does it compete with Prosecco? Does it not? Are they making it uh, champagne style? I don't think so. I think they're just made from better grapes. Prosecco's made from Galera, so it's a different grape, too. And I think this one's Chardonnay. Cremant de Sauce. I think this is Chardonnay. Cremant de Bourgogne's are typically Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Cremant de Loire could be Chenin. Could be other grapes. I think Alsace is could be Riesling, although I don't think this one's Riesling. I think this is a Chardonnay, but I don't know 100%. But Prosecco is made from Galera, a totally different grape. So Champagne's making sparklers out of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and then Pinot Meunier. Typically a blend. I typically like the Blanc de Blancs, which means 100% Chardonnay. I kind of just prefer those. I don't know. Just generally, I prefer those, I think. Uh, so, God, sitting on the couch, 12-minute video, this is ridiculous, but... One final sip with the Bordeaux. See, it smells so good. It smells like it's going to be this really beautiful French Bordeaux. This is definitely a chameleon of a wine. Showing one thing on the nose and then just a different thing on the palate. It's unfortunate. Fortunate. Even with the decanting, it, it's just falling short. Short finish, not a lot of things on the palate. More on the nose, which is interesting. That doesn't happen often. Normally what you get on the nose, you'll get some of that on the palate, and then you'll get even more. And then you'll get the length, and then you get the tannin. You're not going to get the length and tannin on the nose. You get that on the palate, uh, the acidity. So you can get those other three components of wine on the palate. So automatically you feel like you're getting three more. But then there's all these aromas that I'm just not getting on the palate. All I'm getting is this astringency and this drying. It's the acid is what might be really messed up on this one. It's giving me a drying feeling, not a mouth watering feeling. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. It might just be that it's just too young. But you're talking about this isn't like a growth. Well. The growths are only in the left bank. The right bank's got class A's. They got different rankings. And, and the right bank's all a mess because people withdrew or chateaus withdrew. <sighs> call it what it is, right? You call it what it is. I'm not going to finish it all tonight. I will have more tomorrow. If there's something better to say, I'll say it. I don't anticipate this to getting any better, even with age, even with just more oxygen. Excited to try that Zaccardi Malbach for 15, 16 bucks. I think I really want to 
see what that tastes like. And then a Concrete Dough. The Concrete Dough is a great wine for 30 bucks. It, super cool Malbec. I'm, I'm glad... I'm glad that some, like, Zuccardi is trying to bring it back. Katana's always been amazing with Malbec. I, I, they just have. I feel like in the Katana world, though, their low-end kind of tastes like low-end. Their high-end is amazing. It, it, phenomenally amazing. They're two... Oh gosh. It, phenomenally amazing. I've done two videos on the one I love from them with the really awesome bottle, and I'm blanking on the name right this minute. And then they just have their standard, uh, they have their cab, which is trying to be Bordeaux, and it absolutely is Bordeaux. See, that's the thing. It's, it's trying to be a Bordeaux type of blend in Argentina, and it works. It's got that a little bit of rusticity, but it's got that new world. It's like a blend of both worlds, and it's phenomenal, but you got to pay the money. So Katana's high end, you just have to pay for it. But it's exceptionally good. But it's to the point where these hundred dollar wines from there, from Argentina, what are they rivaling? What are they, so is it the Bordeaux, the great Bordeaux that are three four hundred? I, I guess so. Rivaling the Napa's of three four hundred, they're different stylistically. The three four hundred dollar Napa wines are different bit more unctuous from what I've seen. So I haven't gone into the, the cult category. I have my Scarecrow, which I will be drinking in three more years. My Scarecrow 2019, one I've always wanted to try. Debating on also getting a Latour First Growth Bordeaux. I've had Aubryon 2005 and La Michonne 2005. I think it was a hundred dollar wine at the time. Up here was five hundred. Now they're far more expensive. But both of those were phenomenal. So Aubrey being the first growth I think I've ever had. I feel like I tasted one more one other time, but I don't remember. But I remember the Aubrey and it was phenomenal. Two thousand five. At the time, retail five hundred bucks. Far more now, probably a thousand, if not more. So three more years. I'm debating on getting a Latour. It's from Poyac. I love Poyac, and getting, I think, a 14 would cost about $600. And then three years from now, trying the Poyac, I'm sorry, the Latour, six, the Latour 14, the Scarecrow 19, and maybe the Bontec Canet, Chateau Bontec Canet, which is also on Poyac 5th Growth, 2,900 point wine. Don't love the score stuff, but that wine now is retailing for four hundred dollars. So a four, a five, and a six hundred dollar wine, three years from now being my my fiertieth birthday, as sort of a, an amazing celebration and pairing them with something I've never had, Wagyu A five filet mignon. So I love, I like Wagyu A five strip and prime strip, New York strip. And ribeye, but it's too fatty. You can't eat a steak. It's an appetizer only. You eat five or six little cubes. You sear them off. You add a little salt. Beautiful appetizer. Tastes like butter. The filet mignon, Japanese Wagyu A5, phenomenally expensive. But you can eat the whole steak, which not a huge chunk, but enough. So you feel like you're still eating steak. Something I've never had. I feel like pairing that. With these wines would be a phenomenal 50th birthday. So not going out for it, but just staying in for it. Cooking it myself, decanting those wines. Really just enjoying it with some company. I think is a great way to do 50. This is the longest, craziest video on the couch ever. Too much to say when I really started it. What a bad wine here. So I'm going to leave it at that. And finish my sparkler. Steak's done. Have it with some salad. Also some cheese, tomato, basil with the sparkler, the cremental sauce, which is phenomenal. And I'll bring up the bottle one day because I think that wine is awesome. But this, uh, this Bordeaux, unfortunately, is not. It's okay. It's just okay. Definitely not going to buy it again. I think it was in the 30s. 
nah. I'll buy an obsidian any day of the week for 32 bucks and it'll blow the side of the water. I, I decanned an obsidian for, for an hour and a half, two hours. It, this, this is a joke compared to it. So, all right. Have a good night.